So today, uh, we've gotten a lot of requests over our tutorial videos uh, to do the Scumpador from the, uh, the poster. It's one we haven't done a tutorial on since the original Ruzel DVD. And it's, I have to say, probably the least requested haircut in the shop. When you're doing a flat top, and hair that has not been flat topped before, you want to make sure that you're using clean water and clean hair. It's important that the hair is totally in its natural position, so you can get it to fully lift out of the roots the way it naturally will be able to do. This will ensure that Wilco can recreate his scumpador tomorrow morning. So when you are cutting these super rockabilly classic haircuts, you don't just want to cut them square, but you actually want to cut them so they go out of it. Because then when you put the pomade in and slick them, they'll be slick to square. So as opposed to how we normally hold the comb, totally square. These, I actually tend to angle the comb out a little bit to preserve a little bit of that length so you get this super square shape that you can see now there's all this extra length in here. It's still square, but you'll be able to slick all this back with a nice strong pomade. So when you're doing a flat top, body position is everything. Because if you're doing a flat top and your shoulders are like this, you'll never be able to get the comb straight. It's about straight, like this. So then when you're in front of your work, you're always working in that square shape. Whether, and this is true for all haircuts. Where you're doing a short haircut, you want to make sure your body's square and you're pivoting around the haircut. Or you're doing a long haircut. Or a really long haircut. In which case, you're standing here, <laughs> and you're pivoting around the haircut. Okay, so now you can see, like I talked about earlier, we left this wide corner here. This is great, because we saved a lot of length. So what I like to do at this point, is turn the customer towards the mirror, and you can see immediately, this is definitely too wide. You can see it sticks out right here. So if you freehand along the side, you can get it exactly in the shape you're looking for. Just work it into, you still don't want the haircut going in. The scumbador is about width. But you want to make sure that you get a little bit more of a controlled shape. A more just regular lean shape to the head. Because this will make it so much easier for your customer to style in the morning. And most importantly, keep the haircut from mushrooming on the day that he does not style. Never. <laughs> so we're going to put in a little bit of the fiber gel now. We're going to dry it into the final shape. We're going to go over it a little bit more with the, the clippers and the straight shear. We're going to scrunch some... <laughs> Ducts. Ducts. Quack, quack. <laughs> <laughs> Normally we would make a decision uh, for any kind of haircut that has to stand up, we go to two products, the pink or the gray. Uh, when I'm working with a haircut like this, that I would recommend the customer blow dry as quickly at home, I would always go for a water base, so I will be going for the gray, as well as, especially because Wilco's definitely going to want to take a shower when he gets home and get all those little hairs off. The pink is just going to stick them to his head, while a little bit of the gray will still just rinse out in the shower for him. It's important you don't over product the hair here. If there's too much product in the hair, uh, the whole thing is just going to be lost. You're just going to sink into the hair, the whole hair is going to fall apart. Just a little bit of the hair in the hair, just to fluff it up. And remember to use that scrunching technique to get fluff it straight it up, out of the baby. Fluff it up. Not enough, Jason. Not enough. Fluff it. Fluff it. <laughs> And when you're scrunching the hair, you want to make sure to scrunch it out from the roots, not in the direction the roots grow, to get the maximum lift out of them. And you can see already with just that little bit of product, <laughs> those sides free placement. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, it looks just like the poster. <laughs> Ten years younger. <laughs> can you move your eyebrows? <laughs> Ruzel <laughs> makes your hair move. The final shape 
is set in, we're just going to detail the final shape with our blending shears and our color. We're just going to try and refine the basic shape we've set in now. So we're just looking for any small uneven portions in the haircut, maybe bits of weight that are created by this wide angle on the side, and just trying to make sure that these ends are as even as possible. And you might think that by using the blending shear we're making the ends less even, but the same way that when you create a blunt fringe you use the points of your scissors, we're using that same principle with our blending shears, just working on that last millimeter of the hair to make sure it's as visually even as possible. What we're doing here what is we we're taking here. the spiker and put it on the head the shaped object. Now we take it and we pull it up. <laughs> Look, here, Look at how we're doing it with our wrist and not with the arms. <laughs> What the Just like you, oh, like ten years ago. Oh, I have the memories. <laughs>